Hello, educators, and welcome to another week of Teacher Tips. This week, we're looking at a website that makes flipped classroom learning more engaging and can also help hold students accountable for their watching of at-home videos. The website is edpuzzle.com, and Edpuzzle allows you to take video from a variety of sources and add your own audio notes and even quiz questions directly into the video. To see how this works, I'm going to create a video lesson for art students to analyze a promotional video for the fictional school Rue Academy. I'm going to get started by finding the video I need to create. First, let's go and click on Teachers Start Now. To search for a video, you can use a variety of sources, including YouTube, Khan Academy, TED, even Vimeo and TeacherTube. I'm simply going to type out the video I'm looking for, which is Why Rue Academy? And I'll hit Enter to search. The first video that comes up is the one that I believe I want to use. It has the right title. If I simply click on it, I'll have the opportunity to preview this video. Okay, so this is the right video. So now that I've got the right video selected, let's go and click Use This Video. So the real power of Edpuzzle is now about to happen. Here we can go through and make modifications to the YouTube video and then upload it to the Edpuzzle site where our students can watch it. The first thing that we can choose to do is we can choose to crop the video. Let's say that our video was 25 minutes long and we only wanted students to watch a small section of it. Well, if I click on the video and start playing it, I'll go ahead and pause that. I now have the opportunity at the bottom to grab these anchor points and to drag them out to trim the video. For example, if I move them to right there and I were to move to the next step, only this middle section or whatever's between the two red anchor points would actually be included in the video that I'm using. Now for this particular lesson, I want students to see the entire video. So I'll go ahead and leave the anchor points all the way at their furthest left and right position. And I'll simply click next. The next option available to us is to add an audio over track. For example, if I wanted to narrate this video for my students, I could actually play the video hit the record button and then talk over top of whatever is happening. And I could actually instruct while the video is going on. This is a great thing to do if you have a video where you've taken, let's say, PowerPoint slides, turned them into a movie track, and you now like to add your instruction on top of that movie track. Because we don't want to narrate this entire movie, we just want to add some audio notes. I'm not going to use this feature for this particular presentation and simply click the next button. At this point, we can use something called audio notes. Now, an audio note is actually going to be a note that we place at certain time signatures throughout the video. As students are watching the video and they reach an audio note, the movie is going to automatically pause itself and play the audio note. So what I'd like to do is to allow students to watch just the introduction to the video. And as Rue Academy starts to fade away, I'd like to add an audio note that actually introduces students to what the assignment is. So I simply navigated to this part by clicking on the yellow slider and then moving it around on the timeline to the place that I'd like it. Once I have the slider in the right position, I'm going to click on the record button and record an audio note for my students. Hello class, this week is all about finding and analyzing design elements in video. Be sure to answer all of the questions to get credit for this lesson and be ready to bait this video in class tomorrow. Now that I've recorded my audio note, I can see that a new note has been created at that particular time signature. If I'd like to, I could click on this and actually move it to a new location. Or I could grab the slider at the very bottom, click and hold, go to another section of the note and record another audio note. Because students are analyzing this video, the introduction audio note is probably all that we need. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the next button. The final step and one of the most powerful steps for Edpuzzle is the ability to embed questions directly into the presentation. Embedding question acts a lot like adding an audio note. When the video plays to where the question's at, the movie's going to automatically pause, display the question for students, and give them an opportunity to answer. Let's go and find this first section where it brings up a quote from Claire about the school. What I'd like students to analyze in this section is why did the creators of this video choose to use different font sizes for this text? So to do that, with my slider in the right place, I'm simply going to click on the question button. Here, on the right-hand side, I have the opportunity to add a question. I'm just going to say, why did the creators of this movie use different font sizes for this section? If I'd like to, I could add multiple questions, but I'm simply going to click Done. So now, when students get to this part of the movie, it's going to automatically pause. They'll see the question on the right-hand side, and they'll have a text box where they can fill this question out. At this point, I could go through the rest of the movie and add check for understandings, or even add questions to inspire thinking about the movie. But just so we can see how these are going to play out in the end, I'm going to go ahead and click Done. 
Now at this point, I've actually created and added all my content and I'm not even signed into Edpuzzle. To expedite the sign-in process, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with Google and I'm gonna go ahead and select my teacher at Orange Valley Schools account and then click Accept. Now that I'm logged in, I can go ahead and give my new video a title, I can select the language and even add tags to make it searchable. Once this information is filled out, let's go and click Save and Exit. So at this point, we've created our first video. The next step would be to create a class and then create this video as an assignment for the class and send it out to our students. When we create classes and then attach the video as an assignment to that class, that's what's gonna allow us to view the answers that our students type in. In order to see how this plays out for our students, however, let's go and click on My Content in the upper navigation and take a look at our Rue Academy video. Now, if you remember, we added an audio note and a question, and in the upper right-hand corner of the video, I can see that there's icons showing that this video has an audio note as well as a question. To play it, all I have to do is simply click the play button. To see how these things work, I'm just gonna advance the slider right before our audio note and then press play again. Hello class, this week is all about finding and analyzing design elements in video. Be sure to answer all of the questions to get credit for this lesson and be ready to bait this video in class tomorrow. So the video automatically played until the audio note. The audio note was read out to students, it continued playing, and now here we've reached our first question where the video has paused and is gonna allow students an opportunity to type in their answer. Now you'll notice that I don't have the ability to type in an answer, and that's because this video has not been assigned to me. You will need to create a class and create an assignment in order for students to add responses so that you can monitor those responses. Please keep in mind that students do have the opportunity to click continue and not answer the questions. I'd recommend communicating to students that answering the questions is what gives them credit for having this as a completed assignment. I hope you enjoy using Edpuzzle and that you find this a great tool for teachers that are using the flipped classroom.